Phew! I have finished Final Fantasy VII Rebirth 100%, and that has been one hell of a challenge. All of the side quests, all of the minigames, open world activities, Queen's Blood card collection, hard mode, and all of the battle challenges. Is this not a bit much, sir? There is so much to do for 100%, and as you may have noticed from my voice and previous videos, I have been so ill, but it was still worth pushing myself to play this. You kidding me? So I love Rebirth. They managed to capture the adventure of Final Fantasy VII that's filled with banter and goofy moments, while still contrasting with the more serious storytelling. Sorry, but this is people food. <sighs> I think combat is a huge upgrade and extension to Remake, and I cannot wait to talk about Queen's Blood, the new card game. There's hundreds of things I love, but I've definitely got some issues and nitpicks as well. Tell me something that'll really make my blood boil! Join me and I'll explore where Rebirth ranks on the scale with Remake and the original Final Fantasy VII. I want to start talking about minigames because if you've played Final Fantasy VII before, you know that minigames are a core element. 7 is the home of the Gold Saucer, a huge theme park filled with minigames, and 7 has the most minigames out of all Final Fantasy games. Have your fun, while you still have time. Well, I guess it had the most because somehow, Rebirth alone has even more minigames than the original. That is insane. Chocobo Racing, Fort Condor, 3D Brawler, G-Bike, loads of classics return, there's loads of new stuff, lots of which is fantastic but I can admit that there are a few stinkers out there too. Like a crate throwing puzzle segment or sneaking up on chocobos. Maybe some of these could have been trimmed out. Well, no point dwelling on it. But my absolute favorite is Queen's Blood, a new collectible card game I must have dropped about 15 to 20 hours on. Rules might seem a little overwhelming at first. Once you've played a few games, it's easy to get completely addicted. Throughout the game, you can chill from the story and challenge people to Queen's Blood. After you've played a bit, you eventually start getting visions. And it turns out there's an entire side story with Queen's Blood, and it goes full on Yu-Gi-Oh by the end. I have to tell them. They all need to know the terrible truth about Queen's Blood. I think what keeps Queen's Blood engaging and exciting is that through the course of the game, you'll find more and more powerful cards. These newer cards might have a lower cost to play or a really nice bonus effect, and you're gonna wanna change up your deck and experiment. My favourite custom deck was all about sacrificing my own minions to power up Tomberry Kings who get stronger every time one of my minions die. A perfect optional addition to Final Fantasy VII, especially when you consider that the other Final Fantasies from that PlayStation 1 era also had card games. I think Queen's Blood might technically be a better card game to play than even Final Fantasy VIII's Triple Triad, but I still love how you can do so many things with the cards in it. I have been waiting for this for so long. You guys have no idea how much I've wanted another quality card game in a single player Final Fantasy. What a coincidence. So have I. Quickie, really want to level up my subscribe account because that's going to unlock early review copies of games. My rebirth review is so late. I'm miles behind all the outlets who get their reviews out before release date. I bet most of them didn't even finish the game. Really would appreciate if you guys can help me unlock early review copies of games. That would make such a huge difference. Thank you. Da, 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 da. So Rebirth generally follows the major story beats of the original Final Fantasy VII. We're chasing the trail of Sephiroth across the world. Calm, Junon, Costa del Sol, Coral. It's almost like a checklist. We go to most of the same locations, but there are quite a few changes. I'd say they change things up a bit more than they did in Remake. There's a chapter dedicated to Gongaga, which was pretty much an optional location in the original. About 90% of the story in this chapter is entirely new, or draws from future moments, or a little extended lore from the Crisis Core game. The game starts with us playing Zack in an alternative reality, which was pretty mind-blowing for me as a Final Fantasy fan, but if you didn't play the original Final Fantasy VII, or spoil yourself with Crisis Core, you'll have no idea who Zack is, and still won't until the third part of this remake series. I find it a bit odd, because that moment I'm talking about in the third part is my favourite part of Final Fantasy VII, because we're already seeing so much stuff with Zack that wasn't in the original, I'm worried they're gonna mess up my favourite part later down the line. This is so messed up. As you play through the game, you'll occasionally check in with Zack's point of view. These segments are quite short and I feel like they don't draw you away from the main story. Lots of little changes, some of the changes are brilliant, 
There's things I never would have imagined, and I am so glad I got to see them, like Red 13 riding a chocobo, or characters facing off that never even met each other in the original. <sighs> How this time in Junon you have to recruit regiments of soldiers to join the parade. And they'll follow you around and wait for you while you go shopping. Find what you needed, sir! Hope so, sir! That is amazing. There's so much attention to detail, it can be incredible. But changing fate can be a little bit double-edged. Like at Costa del Sol, we fight the evil Professor Hojo on the beach, and then we just let him go, despite all the atrocities he's committed, and will continue to do so. I know he needs to be alive for part 3, but I feel it was better written in the original, where he wasn't an active threat that tried to capture us in that moment. So it made more sense to let him go. Why change that? That, my friends, is for me to know, and for you to find out. I spoke to a few friends and they all made that exact same point. There's a few other moments like that, overall a mixed bag with some good changes, and some that are not quite as good as the original. Not to mention, we delve deeper into multiverse storytelling. The original Final Fantasy VII is already a complicated but brilliant story, and it needs time to weave its perfectly executed twists and foreshadowing. I feel like throwing multiverse storytelling in on top of that is just too much. Yeah, I think I'm good with just one cloud. The one and only. There's so much attention to detail and so many references to the original. So many things I wanted to see that I couldn't even imagine translated from those PlayStation 1 chibi Lego visuals to modern graphics, but Square Enix did it. Two legs, nothing to it. So when it comes to combat, just like Remake, we've got a hybrid of action and turn-based combat, where you can issue commands across your party. I actually really enjoyed Remake's combat, and I feel like Rebirth upgrades and expands on what we've already got. Aerial combat is so much better now, it's so much more fluid, and it's so easy to launch yourself into the air and stay there. A new feature I really like is the synergy system. We got almost a prototype synergy system in Intermission, but this is the real deal in Rebirth. For every ability or spell used by a party member, their synergy bar fills up. You can then spend that synergy bar on different flashy synergy attacks, my favourite ones level up your limit break. I really like synergies because they all play into that pseudo turn-based system and expand on it. Now, I've said it before, I originally wasn't a huge fan of the stagger system with Final Fantasy XIII. Basically, you attack enemies and build up a stagger bar. Once it's full, an enemy is temporarily staggered and takes increased damage. But over time, we've seen the stagger system refined and I feel it works really well here. You're rewarded for exploiting enemies' weaknesses or elemental vulnerabilities by the stagger bar being filled up. And once staggered, you've got the perfect opportunity to unleash those synergy attacks I was talking about earlier, or big beefy limit breaks. No holding back. Huge fan of the combat, but the pillars that help hold up the combat are this game's customization and progression systems. Folios are light skill trees with meaningful passive upgrades and some new abilities. I much prefer Folios to Remake's weapon upgrade system, where to be honest, I just set them to auto upgrade. And of course the Materia system returns. How does Materia let you cast spells exactly? <laughs> A deceptively simple customization system that anyone can quickly pick up, but has the depth of Seven's Ocean. Very satisfying and rewarding for those that like to experiment and discover new combinations of Materia. And Rebirth adds loads of new types of Materia to experiment with. But holy crap, Final Fantasy music is always stellar and some of the best out there, but this is so good. In Remake, I was completely blown away by pieces like Genova's theme, and I knew there'd be more Genova in Rebirth, but I couldn't imagine how they would outdo the music they already created in Remake. But they absolutely crushed nearly every song. Yeah, let's just say, I think Rebirth is probably going to be my favourite game soundtrack of 2024. Aw, thanks bro! One thing I was dreading with Rebirth was how they would deal with the classic overworld. I love old school overworld maps in older RPGs, and I was worried that that would translate into a modern day formulaic open world experience, and I was kind of right to be worried. <laughs> Aye, that's right. Worried. I will say, I was gobsmacked to discover that they've partially recreated the feeling of an overworld, by allowing us to seamlessly travel between regions and the areas in between. 
But yeah, the open world involves activating radio towers, then completing unveiled side objectives on the map. Kill rare enemies, scan life springs, chocobo digging, a single Moogle minigame that appears in every region, and proto relic activities which usually involve fun minigames. I personally think that the game would have been better without these towers, that way I'd have to discover these objectives like rare monsters by myself, maybe with some subtle environmental clues hinting that there's rare monsters nearby. Speaking of environmental clues, if you can climb something it's usually marked with yellow paint. Not a huge fan of this in gaming, I wish they found a better way to integrate these markers with a more subtle way that fits into the world of Final Fantasy VII. But I guess it's still better than the original's climbing system. Oh it is, is it? Back to the open world, it sounds a little formulaic and repetitive, it's not all bad. Uh, there's still hidden areas like when I swam out and found this island with materia, or chocobo rest spots and treasure cache locations you'll need to discover for yourself, as the towers won't reveal them. There's some epic optional boss fights in the world itself. And some of these open world objectives include some really fun mini games with worthwhile cinematics and powerful summoner material that can be upgraded. I'll admit the open worlds can be rewarding. You can spend points earned from open world activities to purchase powerful materia. You can also earn a chocobo with different colours and abilities in every region. Pretty cool and you can have them wear different equipment and go chocobo racing with them. Come on y'all, let's go bag us a chocobo! The blue chocobo was my favourite because you have the freedom of water hover over any pool of water, while other chocobos needed something more specific, like a vertical ramp to climb or a bouncing mushroom to jump off. There's a few vehicles too that mostly stay faithful to the original Final Fantasy VII, and they really help make that open world feel a bit more refreshing. It's funny, here I am driving around, while in Starfield you can't get any vehicles to traverse hundreds of planets. Ain't that the truth? When it came to Final Fantasy VII Remake, I thought the side quests were one of the weakest elements of the game. Whoa! No need for all that! And I think Rebirth definitely makes improvements to the quality of side quests. It feels like the majority of side quests have some kind of unique gimmick or character development or world building behind them. Who's a good boy? It's you! <laughs> for example, there's a side quest where you need to escort a dog. Yes, an escort quest. It sounds terrible, but it's actually awesome. The pacing is fine, but escorting the dog comes with its own doggy music. And when you engage enemies, there's doggy combat music too. Not to mention while you're escorting the dog, Barrett starts opening up about his fears of being a good parent to Marlene. Oh Marlene, I wish you could be my baby girl forever. Now that is how you do an escort quest. Going for that 100% completion in Rebirth has been a challenge and a half. You'll need to complete the open world, get high scores in tons of minigames, earn champion rank at Queen's Blood, and you'll need to complete all of the battle challenges, which are arena-like fights. I'd only recommend going for 100% if you're really going to invest yourself into it. Completing the open world activities and side quests were the easy bit, getting high scores in all the minigames was a bit harder because there's always going to be that one you personally might find hard. I really struggled with the piano minigame. I've got no rhythm and there was one song I found really difficult and after hours of practice it was a huge relief to complete. Completing Queen's Blood was easy for me. Like I said, I couldn't stop myself from playing. I love this card game so much. Now where things became hellish hard was completing all of the battle challenges, which are arena-like fights with up to 10 rounds each. And if you die, you'll have to start over from round one. The top tier challenges were a nightmare with some very difficult mechanics to deal with. For example, tonberries with their instant death attacks, or giant worms that will just eat party members alive. And it was exhausting losing 20 minutes into a challenge at round 8 or 9, then having to start over. But the very top tier legendary battle challenge was insanity. You'll need to face off against all of the game's summons, two at a time, then after you're exhausted, you'll have to deal with a surprise super boss. You kidding me? Good luck. That said, I think this was a really good showcase of how brilliant and in-depth Rebirth's combat system and material customization can be. I was constantly recustomizing my characters to exploit different types of enemies. Really good stuff. Okay, time to see how many petabytes Rebirth is going to score with my latest creation, the Peterbot. Let's run through it real quick. Not a super huge fan of some of the more formulaic open world elements. I believe that the majority of the side quests feel stronger than in Remake. Combat is a huge upgrade to Remake, and I personally really like that they play more into the pseudo turn-based elements with the synergy system. 
I like the folio progression system and the materia system continues to be fantastic customization with loads of new types of materia. Music rocked my socks off, I'm still actively listening to the soundtrack. Love the minigames which are an integral part of Final Fantasy VII. I think you could have trimmed a few out though, if you're not a huge fan of minigames these might be a deal breaker for you. Queen's Blood is a fantastic card game, literally a game inside a game. You have no idea how long I've been waiting for another quality card game in a single player Final Fantasy. Story was good for the most part, it follows a lot of the story beats of the original Final Fantasy 7. Some really good changes and some not so good. I've got a separate video talking about my raw thoughts and more mixed feelings on the ending. I will say for a lot of people in the comments section, it seems like the ending damages the game as a whole for them. Going for 100% completion is maybe a bit much, love a lot of the content but it gets a little bit repetitive and I'm sure I've fought the same endgame mini bosses so many times while doing the battle challenges. What's the score Peter Bot? How many Peter Bites does Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth deserve? 92. 92. There you have it and let's look at the Metacritic average too. Oh, I'm exactly the same as the average critic score. I was worried I'd be too biased being a huge Final Fantasy 7 fan, but I think I liked Remake a tiny smidgen bit more, I'm still deciding. Still a fantastic game even with my criticisms. I feel I need to see how part 3 goes to properly judge the series as a whole, and see if they manage to successfully execute the big storytelling moments that were critical in the original. Peace.